Good morning. Happy Monday. If the three videos, or if at least two of the three videos where I actually sat down and showed comments and looked at case law, if they could have convinced you of any one thing, I would hope that that one thing is that maybe you don't know as much as you think you know. Maybe you don't know how to practice law. But I doubt it has done that because I've seen a lot of comments on those videos saying things like judges can still do whatever they want. And they do it. They do whatever they want. The, the problem with that is that they don't. They don't do whatever they want. They're... With any, with any human institution, there are always going to be failings. So understand that if you show sometime, like where judges in the Ninth Circuit have, have uh, made decisions based along political lines instead of legal lines, I grant it. I absolutely grant it. And in those political cases, making those political decisions, were the judges wrong? Yeah. Could they make an argument for it, though, that they were make, that they were doing it based on legal lines? Yes, they could. I don't agree with it. You probably don't agree with it, but yes, they could. And the difference between those kinds of cases where there's actual politics involved and your average run-of-the-mill civil suit or your average run-of-the-mill criminal case are that the judges believe that they have an interest in the political one. The judges don't have an interest. They don't care about you in your average run-of-the-mill civil or criminal case. Obviously, if, if you're in front of a judge for a direct contempt action, the judge might have more of an interest because you were in contempt in, in his court. You were in contempt of his order. So again, caveat being, all human institutions have failings. You can actually go research judges being disciplined. Most states, the ones that I've looked up, they post the disciplinary proceedings for lawyers and judges who are in a position to at least determine criminal cases that matter, i.e., you know, in Texas it would be district court judges because they could do felonies and some of the bigger misdemeanors. They got to be lawyers. And even if they're not, they're still bound by the at least in Texas and California, there's the uh, judicial canon of ethics or some, I forget exactly what it's called, but it's something along those lines. In Texas, it's uh, canon 2A. It says they will comply with the laws. They will comport themselves with the law. They will act in a way that shows respect for the law. And I know Texas publishes its disciplinary actions. Generally speaking, I'm sure there are some disciplinary actions that are private that aren't published, but you know, whatever. You get what I'm saying. You can research it. Instead of just instead of just talking out of your ass and saying judges aren't sanctioned ever, ugh, go do some research. If it was a big issue, lawyers would be crying about it. Because lawyers like to win. And if lawyers are, aren't crying about it, then there's probably not an issue with the judges. At least as far as that is concerned. Now every... Like every... Every judge I've ever been in front of has made a decision that I don't think is the right decision. But that doesn't mean that it was without merit. That doesn't mean the decision 
wasn't supportable. They didn't have something because they, they write minute orders or uh, findings and orders after hearings or they statements of decisions. They have lots of different ways to publish to you, to the parties, what their decision was and how they arrived at it. And they'll have something to support their decision. You might not agree with their reasoning, but it's there. And reasonable minds can reasonably differ. So I think most of the, most of the whole impetus behind the, uh, uh, let's go this way. Most of the impetus behind the whole courts are corrupt thing is because people just don't fucking understand the law. There's a result that they don't understand. Uh, the Supreme Court says, or the Constitution says, you know, the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And, and there's this gun law and it's infringing my Second Amendment rights. And so obviously it's unconstitutional because shall not be infringed. Which word don't you understand? Shall not be infringed. And they don't understand that the court has put in rules, in abilities, in ways that the government can infringe your right to keep and bear arms. And you start off at the basics and you can see how the courts get there. Do you want insane people, criminally insane people to have firearms? If yes, you're probably C.J. Grisham. If no, you're probably sane, normal, and rational. Step number two is, do you want felons who are in prison currently serving sentences to have firearms, to be able to keep and bear firearms? Boy, that would make keeping them in prison a tad bit difficult, wouldn't it? Oh, so all of a sudden you understand that it's that it shall be infringed. And now we're just, reasonable minds are just figuring out where that line exists. I get it. Speaking of unreasonable... Uh, Peeping Timmy of News Now OKC and his gullible slash retarded friend Picture Perfect were out and about. Uh, the Hanson brothers throw on a, a street fair kind of thing with music every year. They rent out, they lease out city blocks. And they control who comes in and out. You have to be willing to submit to a search to go in there. Now, Timmy, being retarded, doesn't do any homework before he goes out there. Uh, he doesn't realize that they serve alcohol. So even if they let him in there, Oklahoma statutes prevent you from carrying firearms at places where there is alcohol being consumed. But even beyond that, Timmy doesn't understand that if somebody rents out that area, it is no longer the public's. Oh, there's police there, though. Oh, they're using public resources. Yeah, and they're paying for it. Just like if someone holds a parade, the police are there. But those, those streets belong to the parade for the time being. The parade has rented it. It's the simple stuff. I'm, it amazes me every time that somebody who can manage to tie shoelaces can't figure out that if a non-government agency rents a few blocks of city and controls access to it for the purposes of putting on some private production, that they get to control who comes in and with what. They can trespass you. It is no longer, for the, for the duration of that lease, it is no longer the city's right to control. Just like if you rent an apartment, you can kick people out of it. It's no longer the apartment manager or owner's right to control. Anyway, uh, I think that roughly sums up today's conversation. Uh, judges don't get to do whatever they want to do. I mentioned it in comments, but there are not one, not two, not three, but four different ways that judges can be removed. Elected judges 
can be removed in Texas four different ways. There's a, a judicial commission that can investigate the judges. The Supreme Court can kick you off. You can get impeached with the governor and the Senate, or you can get impeached with the House and the Senate in Texas. So yeah, judges have to follow the laws. And if there's gray area, if, if you can make an argument for either side, well, then the judge is following the law, whichever side he picks. So I hope that makes sense. I hope it clears it up. Thank you very much for watching and have a great week.